Welcome back, Apology 8th Grade Physical Science Week 21, Day 3, textbook pages 358 to 363, notebook pages 302 and 303. The Electromagnetic Spectrum. You know now that the electromagnetic waves are waves that carry packets of energy through matter or space as vibrating electric and magnetic fields. But did you know that the electromagnetic waves have a wide range of wavelengths and frequencies? The complete range of wavelengths of electromagnetic waves is called the electromagnetic spectrum. Sunlight contains the complete electromagnetic spectrum, though we can only see a small portion of these wavelengths. Figure 10.12 shows the electromagnetic spectrum as we will discuss the varying wavelengths and frequencies of this spectrum in this section. Okay, so here we have the radio waves. Here we have the microwaves, the infrared. We have all of the visible light, the only part that we can see. Ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. All right, the um, longest wavelength, or I should say the wavelength increases as it goes this way. So radio waves have the longest wavelength. And again, since we know that wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional, the highest frequency is over here. So gamma rays will have the highest frequency. All right. Radio waves. The electromagnetic waves with the longest wavelengths are radio waves. The range of radio wave wavelengths can go from longer than a football field to as short as a football. These long wavelength, low frequency waves are used to transmit radio and television signals as well as allow you to talk on your cell phone. It might surprise you that the radio and television signals that are captured with an antenna, a digital satellite dish, a digital cable box, or even just your smartphone are just electromagnetic waves. You can't see these waves, of course, but without them, you would never hear a radio or watch a television program. When you tune a radio or change the channel on the television, you are telling the electronics in the device to look for a particular frequency, thus a particular wavelength. Electromagnetic waves that are of that frequency that strike the antenna are then picked up by the electronic circuitry in the device. The information in that signal is decoded, and the result is the radio or the TV program you wanted to hear or watch. Television signals have shorter wavelengths than radio signals, and FM radio signals have shorter wavelengths than AM radio signals. Microwaves. Microwaves are sometimes considered the shortest wavelength radio waves. The range of microwave wavelengths goes from about one meter to about one millimeter. Microwaves have many uses. The weather radar image on your evening news is one application of microwaves. The GPS system your parents might use to navigate in the car uses microwaves. But probably the most familiar application of microwaves is to cook food. How do long wave electromagnetic waves heat up your food quickly? All right, that's a good question. It turns out that the particular wavelengths used in microwave ovens are absorbed by water molecules in food. When the waves are absorbed, the water molecules spin due to the energy absorbed with the waves. When they start spinning, there is a lot of friction between them and the other molecules in the food, and then that generates heat. That heat cooks your food. A microwave oven heats food quickly compared to a conventional oven because in a conventional oven, the heat must travel into the food being cooked. As a result, the food must get hot on the outside before it can get hot on the inside. In a microwave oven, the microwaves are causing the water molecules throughout the food to spin. Thus, the, foods, the food is exposed to heat all over right away. That makes the food cook a lot more quickly. Infrared light. Electromagnetic waves with wavelengths just shorter than microwaves are called infrared light. 
The term infrared means below red because infrared light waves have lower frequencies, again, and longer wavelengths, remember they're inversely proportional, than red light in the visible range of the light waves. Infrared rays have higher frequencies than microwaves, and their wavelengths vary from about one millimeter to 750 nanometers. Remember that a nanometer is one millionth or 10 to the nine meters. When a hot object gives when a hot object gives off heat, most of the energy is in the form of infrared light. A space heater, for example, gives off a lot of heat. You can see the wires of the space heater glow red, but that is only a small portion of the energy it is emitting. Much of the energy the space heater emits is in the form of infrared radiation, which you cannot see, but you can sense its warmth on your skin. Restaurants use infrared lamps to keep food warm. Zoos use infrared lamps to keep reptiles and other cold-blooded animals warm. A device called a thermograph uses infrared sensors to create a type of infrared map called a thermogram. In figure 1015, a thermograph uses infrared radiation to determine if a house is losing too much thermal energy. The yellow and red colors show that heat is being lost to the outside. The human body is also usually warmer than the surrounding area. So thermographs can be used to help search and rescue teams to locate victims missing after a natural disaster, such as an earthquake or a tsunami. Visible light. Visible light is the part of the electromagnetic spectrum that the human eye can see. All right, we are going to conduct experiment 10.1, visible light in class, um, and then we'll come back and finish the rest of the video. So what did you see in this experiment? If everything went well, you should have seen a rainbow, which is actually the result of separating light according to its wavelengths. What made the rainbow you saw in the experiment? When light travels through different substances, it tends to bend. I will discuss this in much greater detail later on in this module. The amount that the light bends depends in part on the wavelength of the light. Thus, when the sunlight hit the water, it bent. Certain wavelengths bent farther than others. The mirror then reflected the light and it traveled back out of the water. When that happened, the light bent again. Once again, the amount the light bent depended on the wavelength, and that was enough to partially separate one wavelength of light from another. As a result, the reflected light was split into different wavelengths. When it shined on the paper, then it appeared to, to you as a rainbow. What we see is white light that is really light that is made up of many colors. If we separate the wavelengths, we get different colors. The longest wavelengths of light we see are made up of various shades of red, while the shortest wavelengths of light we, are, we see are made up of various shades of violet. The other colors, orange, yellow, green, blue, and indigo, have wavelengths in between. So you can see that on figure 1017, the longest um, wavelengths that we can see are going to be the reds and the shortest are going to be the violets. Although you needn't memorize the wavelength of each color, you do need to memorize the relative size of the wavelengths in question. In other words, you need to know that red lights have the longest wavelength, orange light has a shorter wavelength, yellow has an even shorter, and so on. This is easy to do if you think about the color as a single name. If you start with the color that corresponds to the longest wavelength, red, and you put the first letter of each color together, you come up with the man's name, Roy G. Biv. So if you think of Roy G. Biv, every time you think of the colors of visible light, you will always know that red light has the longest wavelength, violet has the shortest, and you will also know the order of all the colors in between. The wavelengths of visible light are quite small. They range in size from about one hundredth of the thickness of a human hair to the length of a bacterium. Each wavelength of light corresponds to a specific frequency and a specific color. Obviously, we use visible light to see. Plants use different frequencies of visible light to photosynthesize. We use lights to read by at night and to keep from stumbling when it's dark. Red traffic lights tell us when to stop 
and green traffic lights tell us when to go.